You don't just do this. No. You don't just write, make a book, or as everyone would be doing it. We've done it in quick time as well. How I mean, quick did it take? The initial conversation probably took place in about April 2022. Mm. The book was out on the streets December the 22nd, 2022. Buckle, buckle. You find people. What's the hardest what? person? And that was with some delays mm. as well. Shame, shame. Know your name. Killer, killer. Podcast. Killer, killer. Official. Com. <laughs> You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. One, two, one, two. Yo, Killer Keller podcast. Here we go again. Back in effect. How'd you figure? Easy. 400 plus episodes and still shining like the weather. Spring. It's looking good out there. Big shout out to all the shares and cares. People taking advantage of the street culture and uh, getting their television app, which is free. Download iPhone, Android for all your sports. Um, big shout out to our sponsors, Hoddle Warriors crew over at the Crypto Moon Boys Hideout. That's some NFT business for you. Um, and yo, we have a guest in today, which I'm buzzing about. Came all the way into London, um, part of the rave scene as DJ Pilgrim uh, and a very close associate uh, within the graffiti scene, going by the name of Taz. My friend here has gone and done himself a book which without question is more comprehensive than the Killer Keller podcast. Also oh, cool is the man like Taz in the building. How are you, my brother? I'm good. Good to see you. Thank you. Thanks for having so me. If you're not watching and you're, and you're listening, you need to jump on this uh, this visual right now. Big up to the Spotify crew, of course. Um, yo, this is the book right here. And it t- to say it's the A to Z of uh, UK graffiti from the early 80s onwards is, is an absolute understatement. I... I I was lost for about <laughs> as soon as he walked in. I literally had my head in the book, bruv. Where did this all begin, Taz? Jeez. Uh, uh, it's a long story, really. Well, not really. Um, I've, I'm very passionate about graffiti. I mean, being an 80s writer myself, uh, I first started painting probably about 84, 85. So mm. I've always had a love for it. There's always been a passion there. And... I run a group on Facebook, uh, 80s Old School Graffiti, and I've got a lot of my contacts there. And the idea behind that, I originally started that up because many, many years ago, like a lot of us old writers, old gits, whatever you want to call us. um, (laughs) Salute the OGs for real. (laughs) I lost my pictures, and my idea was that if I set up a group on Facebook, maybe I may be able to get some of those pictures back. So... We got a lot of like-minded people all together who were all joining the group. And over the years, the group's been going now, I'd say probably since about 2000 and could be 9, 10, 11. But Whoa. the moment, as it stands, there's about 19,600 people on the group Jesus. from all that's over the world. A lot of people, man. What a joke. I'm going to lean this up here so people can see it while we're talking. Um, that's a lot of people. Yeah. Um, that's a lot of work, brother. <laughs> There was a fair bit of work that went into it, but it, it was a uh, it was a pleasure to do it. It's uh, a journey that I'd definitely undertake again. Really? Yeah. Really? Definitely. Was it therapy? I would imagine it was a walk, walk down the past of and history. Uh, the, there was times I could say where it was stressful, but I'm an early riser, and some of the guys who have helped with regards to information in the book, they'll know that I was sending them messages at like half past four in the morning because. I get up early and then when once I got into it, I'd just start messaging people, just forgetting about the time. And people would be saying, well, you "Messaging me at five o'clock, six o'clock," and <laughs> yeah, asking, I respect you know, that hard. I do, but you got to put the graft in. Yeah, but, but also being a, you know a veteran DJ of of the hour, you could be up at any time. Your, your body clock must be just yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm fifty two, nearly fifty three, so um, yeah. Um, I suppose my body clock over the years has been very up and down and erratic, but it's stabilising a bit there. No, 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 I can't. I, I, from what I'm seeing right now, I can't see no punch cards being worn out just yet, <laughs> brother. Um, how did you get? To, how did you attain these photos? I mean, there's there's obviously the connection with Facebook and yeah. bring, but the quality on these 
pictures, they don't look like they've been compressed or crushed. Yeah, so um, I reached out to... There's a lot of my contacts who I know who are people who, over the years, took original pictures, they went places and have still got the collections. Mm. And I went and found out a lot of the artists who painted the originals as well, so I got them to dig deep. People like Snake, mm. uh, who did some of the early, like, 84, 85 Covent Gardens work. Um, oh. He contributed to the book and he got his outline still because a lot of these guys have still got, some of their outlines in a black book and are very passionate about it and it's mm. protected. So, yeah, uh, like I say, with my contacts, I reached out to a lot of people and uh, there's a lot of people that have helped me put this together. Dude, that's, incre- that's incredible, the fact that you were able to connect with it. That's a lot of people you're talking to at any one given time. Uh, there's a lot of people who I spoke to that have contributed to the book, but there's a lot of people also that I spoke to haven't contributed to it. So you have to try and find out who's got what, mm. and you have to put deadlines in place, and sometimes people don't make the deadline, so... Mm. There was a lot of people who did make it, and with everything that was submitted, there was twice as much there than what we actually needed for the book. Really? Yeah. So what, you got enough for another book or something? Well, yes, easily. Stop However... Stop it. Being greedy, you yeah. always want more? Yeah, of course. Well, look, graffiti, and I, I can totally sympathise from your, from your end about... Some people just don't want to do it. Yeah. Some people don't have the time. Some people miss deadlines. And think, you know, when you do a podcast, is what people fail to um, understand is it's like having rods in the water. Yeah. And every week or two, you give one of them a nudge and just say, look, any update? Any update? These things, you make it look easy, but it fucking isn't easy, yeah, is it? Yeah, no, no, it's not easy <laughs> at all. Because like you say, some people... <laughs> Needs a gentle prod. Mm. Sometimes some people need a, a big prod. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just one of those things. you just got to be a bit persistent, but at the same time you've got to be polite as well. And it's like, mm. you know, people are giving you something as well. They're giving their time. You know, they're having to go up in the loft and see mm. through photos. So, yeah, sometimes you, you've got to be that. a bit patient. Mm. But, yeah, we've a lot of what's in there, these are guys who have still got their original photos. So... Although back then, with cameras from the 80s, most people remember they were like the 110, like disposables, mm. the Kodak, which mm. is where the theme came from, from the cover. So the colour of Kodak, you've got the negative there. And the the Kodak it. writing as well, I the font you. was in red. So it was very fitting with the, the with the book itself and the name Old So Cool. Mm. It's old, it's cool, but... If you say it fast, it sounds like it's old school. It's yeah. old so cool. Old, yeah, old so yeah, cool. Kind of rolls off the tongue. I'm ro- I'm rolling with it. Graffiti writers that generally don't want to be found, though, do they? I mean, the, no. I think there's a currency in that that you would hold by having that communication interaction yeah. with writers in a way that other general people wouldn't have. Where yeah. does where's that where's that respect come from? So, and, and I totally get it, everyone's got, you know, you've got to do what works for you and, you know, there are people out there who, I suppose a lot of the older guys, they're happy to be known and they're happy to have their name put to stuff. Mm. And then there's people who want to stay in the shadows, don't want anyone to know about them. Mm. It's the same with graffiti in general. You know, you've got your legals and people are happy to go there and paint Mm. safely and take the time. You've got your people who are doing trains because trains are, you know, are very big at the moment. Mm. And you've got your people who, for them, it's they get their buzz from doing that. Mm. It, you've got to do what works for you. Yeah, it's true. Because at the end of the day, you're doing it for you, not for anyone else. Mm-hmm. It's you who's paying for the paint. It's you who's, you know, got to pay the price if you get caught. But, you know, it's mm. it's your buzz, so you got to ride with it. 100%. So where are you originally from? Tell us your history. So I am originally from Wolverhampton. Mm-hmm. And I was about, I'd say probably getting into graph proper, I was probably about, 15 and I used to have a paper round around Heath Town Estates where hmm. Goldie used to paint. So all the stairwells from like way back in the 80s, I was walking up and down those doing my paper round. So I'd have my, my marker in the bag, I'd have my camera in the mm-hmm. bag, 
while I'm delivering my papers, I'd be taking pictures and tagging up everywhere around mm-hmm. the estate. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, I'd say, around about 84, 85, that's when I started to get heavily into graffiti. Obviously, the films like Beach Street, Wild Style, even Breakdance, because mm. that's all that Huge. we had then. Yeah. They were like inspiring, mm. and then you had things that you had other programs that came along as well. Other films. Give me some, what other what other programs came? Because so of... things like uh, Hip Hop Story. Mm-hmm. There were more documentaries, not so much films, but mm. there were like short documentaries. Um, bombing as well. That was another one. Perhaps these are all on YouTube. You can people can check. Yeah, them out. yeah, they are. I mean, nice. a lot of people know about bombing because you got Goldie in there, Brim. You'd got Free yeah. D. This one's for the heads that may not know, because of course we're we're talking internationally here. So yeah, bombing was a seminal, yeah. seminal documentary. <laughs> but yeah, and um, those kind of things because we didn't really have like magazines or books back mm. then. I think the first books really to come along were things like subway art and then spray can art. That's right. Which were then everyone's Bible. If you were into graph, you got one of those yeah, yeah, yeah. one way or the other, whether it was like robbed from a library or if you were lucky Standard, enough yeah. to have a paper round and you went and bought one from mm. Hudson's books, if I remember right. Wow. Yeah. You are literally are like an encyclopedia of, <laughs> of just information about this whole era up to now. I know a bit. I know a bit. You do, don't you? Um, what was your career in, in graph like at so, the early ages? Um, mine was probably short-lived. Uh, I started as a toy, 84, 85. For me, I loved tagging mm. back in the day. I used to catch buses. I'd go about three stops, bomb all the top deck, jump off. Go the opposite mm-hmm. side, do the same, mm-hmm. just keep crossing buses. Um, I think the first crew I was ever in was a crew called Inner City Bombers. Nice. Uh, so quite locally, yeah, it's pretty well known. And you, you were familiar with Goldie at the time? Because obviously he's... Yeah, out. yeah, so he was like kind of super in graffiti team in the early ages and then he became the wild criminal. So um, we rubbed shoulders a little bit back then. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was more later on in life that we... Came to like kind of talk more. Nice. Uh, both getting into music, and uh, he used to, he was living here in London and uh, he was making tunes on the Reinforced Records label. And seminal again. Uh, yeah, crazy. Terminator, and that just like boom for him. Yeah, Reinforced it was a force to be reckoned with, still is, I think. Oh, yeah, definitely. Out there. So, you did you meet Goldie and the like as the rave DJ? That they that then later became you, you became known as that graffiti writer. So yeah, my early career like back then. So I was Taz. Well, I was Taz Rock because you had a rock or a one or you had something or other after your name. It? Yeah, or a ski. Um, but my career in graffiti kind of came to an end in 1988 because I got busted for tagging. Ah. Uh, so everything got confiscated for me and. In a way, it kind of worked in my favour because from that, at that age, I was 18, I mm. still wanted to do something. I was still quite with it, should I say. Mm-hmm. So I went into, I was still passionate about music then because I was like big into hip hop. So I thought, I'll get into DJing because one of my friends, he claimed that he did all these mixes and he'd come out with these mixtapes and he was a bit of a billy bullshitter. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's always one. And um, <laughs> I thought, if he can do that, I can do that. Mm. So. I just practised and practised. I had, like, one, like, belt-driven turntable and then the other one was, like, you know, those old turntables that come with two speakers. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. just had one of those and then one <laughs> that had pitch control. So some of my old mixes, like, you could hear me speeding it up and then I let go and then it yeah. boom, slows right yeah. down. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I was originally a hip-hop scratch DJ and then I'd say about 1989, 90... Mm. The rave scene started coming in, or some people classed it house music back mm. then. And killed off a lot of the scene, didn't it? Yeah. I crossed over into that music because for me, and we were talking about this on the way in the car, I loved the likes of Big Daddy Kane, mm. uh Stetson Sonic, uh KRS One, Scott La Rock. And as time changed, I Followed more the faster music like Blade, Hijack. God, I love that era. But man. then things started, West Coast started coming mm. in and it started going slow, gangster rap. And mm. 
that wasn't for me. The boom think, bap kind of yeah, era. The music in. really slowed down. And for yeah. me, I liked more like the faster tempo stuff mm. following the likes of like Hijack. So yeah. Gunshot and the like. Yeah, yeah, Gunshot, yeah. yeah. Hard Noise. Um, Brick, Brickcore kind of. If you guys don't know about this whole genre, it's incredible. It is. It's Hank Shockley, oh, Bomb Squad favorite, like, levels. Uh, what was it? Uh, dope on Plastic. Of course. Gold Top. Yeah, man. Fucking legendary. Yeah. Like, again, like Hank Shockley. You know, Bomb Squad, this kind of sound, but just on steroids, yeah. <laughs> basically. But yeah. yeah, so for me, I then kind of crossed over into the world of rave, and then I started DJing at a club in Wolverhampton called Quest, uh, which in terms of like the rave scene was like one of the best, it was voted one of the best clubs in the country. You nice. had like AWOL coming down to the nights there. Uh, they always had theme nights like Groove Connection nights. So, yeah, there was a lot of... And it was only a nine till two club, but they'd have like four or five headline DJs. Mm. And I, I was there as like the warm-up, but over time I then became the headline because a lot of the guys, if they were coming from London, they'd be late or they wouldn't turn mm. up at all, and then I'd stand in for them. So it's the way I do it. Yep. It's the that's, way I do yep. it. That's what success is made of. Yeah, you've got to be there to... Uh, you've got to grab your chance when you can. got to be there. Got to be so there. for me, it, it just... I put a bit of graft in, but um, like I say, as that club came up through the ranks, so did I. And then I started playing at the likes of Fantasia and bigger events up and down the country. So I think Fantasia, there was something like 25,000 people that was there. A cool, casual 25,000 people. <laughs> yeah. That's bonkers. That's what they estimated, but... Apparently there was more than that because you had people, rave era. people jumped the Crazy. fence and all sorts. There was talk that there was forty thousand, but I don't know how true that was. Man, I just it, these are this is folklore conversation. It's just the whole <laughs> idea. I was too young to understand, but I was you know old enough to be watching the TV and you know the criminal justice bill you know being passed and all of a sudden yeah. these amazing raves that just looked like a hell of a lot of fun just were completely put on pause. Um, one of the other contributing pieces of awesome that came through that rave era was the flyers and yeah. the, the ironic twist they would have with brands and other brands creating this kind of yeah. almost like collectible oh, yeah. fly culture. Graffiti was such a big part of that and the graphic design, a lot of graffiti writers steered towards that as yeah, an outlet, yeah. didn't they? Yeah, they did because I, um, I mean, Suburban Base for one, that was one of them where they had an artist who did a lot of artwork for them. And like you say, a lot of, because a lot of the labels were small independent labels, a lot of it was probably the, they used to be a graph artist themselves or their mates a graph, graph artist. So mm. I suppose in a way it was all connected. Mm. And there's a lot of people who I speak to who seem to have followed the same journey that they're like, we're into breaking, then they're going to graph, then they're going to the rave scene and they've mm. kind of gone full circle. So yeah, it's a small world. Isn't it incredible that as a skill set and a reasonably cheap to enter one like grab a can paint or grab a mic rap break dance these things real like i say cheap to enter and yet it provides people with a, a platform to do stuff yeah. and take things further next level next level next level that's insane isn't it yeah definitely and i think the way that maybe probably back in the 80s the we never looked at it that way. I think it was just, we were young and it was our way of expressing ourselves. And it was just something that maybe, I mean, I know I did it because I loved it. Um, some people may have done it just to fill their time. Um, but yeah, it was one of those things that back then you wouldn't have thought anything like that now, all these years along, right. that careers are being made out of it. Yeah, and then just going back to the Saatchi Gallery, we had a chat before we started, as, as we do, you know, uh, which you can buy the the, the book, also oh, cool, at uh, Saatchi Gallery, while it's still got to be on the streets popping. Not too long now until it's done, is it? Is it no, I mean, uh, we've had a limited number pressed because once that finishes, that's it, no more will be done because we want to make it special to everyone who's got a copy, so... Years to come, it will be collectors. Mm. And I think sometimes, you know, that you have to do that as well, that if people miss the boat, they won't the next time around. Right, so let's get into this book thing, because as you mentioned, you know, progress into furthering careers. I bet at no point did you think in the late 80s, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a, a fucking limited run of a, a book of such, you know, scale and, and content. Yeah. 
how do you go about doing that? So the way this all came about, it was a bit of a, I did say long story, but short. So I've put the work in over the years, built up this group on Facebook. And like I said, I've gotten the knowledge. I know who all the artists are and... In the group, because nowadays on Facebook, anyone can join a group and start posting anything up. So you have mm. to put filters into place to make yeah. sure that yeah. the group lasts longer, that stuff that goes in is relevant. Yeah. So anyway, one day a message comes up from Steve, who's the other guy who helped me put the book together. And, um, Big up Steve, by the way. And, and Morton's as well, Morton's Publishing. Because they've, Hamilton, they've yes. done a tremendous job with the book. That's oh, incredible, yeah. Um, Steve basically put a message into the group to say that we're looking at putting a book together. And over the years, many people have said to me that with the stuff that you know, you should write a book. And I've always thought, nah, not mm. for me. Too much hard work. I'm an easygoing guy. I, I don't like mm. too much work. Mm -hmm. So anyway... Um, I sent Steve a message back saying, you know, I can help with this because, you know, I've got a lot of images and I've got a lot of people who could also uh, contribute. Anyway, we we exchanged details. We had a chat on the phone and we, we started to put something down on paper and here's the and end result. It. But it's just so... It's so freaking grand, isn't it? Like, how... Uh, you don't just do this. No. You don't just write, make a book, or as everyone would be doing it. We've done it in quick time as well. I How mean, quick did it take? The initial conversation probably took place in about April 2022. Mm. The book was out on the streets December the 22nd, 2022. What? And that was with some delays as well with, uh, with the printers in Malta. Oh, so it's more to, uh, okay, so let me do the math here. That's le that's like six months, less. Eight months. Eight months. Yeah. In eight months, we'd like kind of oh, boy. got things down, got a design down, got images together, got a format, got it all pre pressed, ready. You can't. You, you, it's just not. I do, the, I do these podcasts every week, and I recognise work rate when I see it. Dude, this is... Seismic. It's, it's, it's like yeah. I mean, like I say, Morton's, they've done an amazing job because that side was down to them. I mean, I was more the collating the information, getting the right information across, even though there was the odd mistake, but we can only rely on the people who submitted the images. And let's face it, if people are in our late 40s, early 50s, mm. a lot of us forget things. So Let alone know how to use Dropbox and we transfer and <laughs> yeah. things like that. Yeah. It's not easy, is it? No, not at all. Because, again, graffiti writers by design, they, yeah. they don't, they, they defer from technology. Oh, yeah, right? yeah. I mean, a lot, I mean, I've got a lot of contacts on Facebook, but then there's a lot that aren't on Facebook. There's a few I've got on Instagram. There's a few that I've managed to get numbers mm. for. So, yeah, it's just by hook or by crook, you find people. What was the hardest person to get hold of? Ooh. Shame, shame, know your name. Um, <laughs> I've been trying to get hold of Casby for ages and I've yeah. managed to get hold of you him. You got hold of him? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've been trying to get hold of Casby for fucking ever, ever. Um, wow. Who else? Oh. <laughs> I think I'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. Yo, what stays behind the, the, the curtains remains behind the curtains. Is there any funny anecdotes of uh, things that the, you just did not see as a, as a complex curveball or a personality? No, uh... not really. I mean, like I say, I've spoke with a lot, I've had a lot of conversations over text and like I say, either by WhatsApp, by Facebook or by Instagram. And yeah, there's a, there's a, I'm surprised how much I actually remember, to be honest. Really? Yeah. Has it, has it been quite enriching? You've been really... Oh, definitely, yeah. And mm. I mean, there's been things that I thought I'd seen pictures and knew about the history behind the picture and the mm. difference, mm. especially when you start speaking to some of the artists mm. as well. It's interesting you say that. Uh, it's always after the uh, after the book. Mm. Or rather, if I'm doing a podcast, the real conversations happen after. Yeah. And I bet you've been privy to some of the most insightful moments that you could never put in a book. It's... it's but that journey alone must have yeah. been something incredible. Oh, like I say, it was a great journey. And like I say... There was more that could have gone into there, but the thing is, if you start putting more in, the size of the book then doubles, mm. the 
cost of the book doubles, the price of it doubles. How's that? Well, talk to me about a price of a book good of this so size. So the how's book it itself is like? uh, it's forty pound to buy, and um, how much? How how much did it cost? To, oh, I'm really intrigued about the nuts and bolts. That, I don't really know because, like I say, you're a contributor. It's the yeah. So. Although I've kind of orchestrated it, it's the publishers. Mm. They're the people who deal with, like, the finer details mm. about the... I mean, they obviously speak to me about what size we're going for and we, we agreed on, like, having it this style. But, um, yeah, the things like the quality of the paper and who they use for the printers and what it's cost is just left down to them. Mm. You must look at it, though, and so, say, yeah, that's... To be honest, that kind of that stuff... It doesn't bother me because I know that they do a good job with mm. the conversations that we've had. And before this book, how this came about is that they did a book, which a lot of people may have out there, called We Were Rad. Okay. Um, it was on the same basis that what they did is they got a couple of guys who were into old school BMX in and got them to submit images. And I think they must have had a few contributors as well who also submitted images. So... That's the same kind of book, which is the first book that they did, which then led them on to, why don't we do one about old school graffiti? It's fucking great. A um, bit more of a wider question. Obviously, you know, it extends to people. If you want to comment below, do so. Um, I think all of us have seen over our own genera our own lifetimes, graffiti move in, you know, in a quite a culturally appropriate way. Um, and I'm sure you've seen from afar this journey of graffiti like what in what era what defines what what moment defined graffiti in your mind of an era what, what like what what was an era defining moment that changed the way perceptions of graffiti were i think it's constantly changing all the time because each and every day i mean things like this you know i mean 20 odd years ago there was there wasn't podcasts like mm, this mm. there wasn't um, gallery showings like the beyond the streets mm. there wasn't constant <laughs> updates when there's a new banksy piece that's been on the news mm. so it is constantly groundbreaking all the time because it's always pushing it out to like new faces i mean you've got your new generations who you know growing up and they see things like and They'll get into it and then they could be like the next artist three years down the line who's like painting like the streets. Yeah, yeah. So for me, I don't think you can put a date on any kind of defining time because mm. it's just constantly evolving and mm. I suppose really every day. So, and it just, it, um, it allows the future artists yeah. to not fast track, but just be aware of how things are, what the protocol is. Yeah. And the code I mean, of with the, the idea of the book as well. I mean, it, a lot of uh, a lot of us older writers, should I say, over the years, have either had pictures confiscated or they've been damaged in a loft because mm. they're normally in a shoebox and it gets damp up there, mm. or they've just been lost in a house move or exes won't give them back. And over the years, there's a lot of people like who I've spoken to about their collections and they've said, I had I had loads years ago or it got confiscated. So with this book, the idea was always to go back to like an old school basis format that this isn't digital at all. It's old school. It's a book. It's in your hand. You read it. If your mate wants it, you've got to borrow it to him. You've got to loan it to him, but you'll want it back. Mm, yeah, yeah, Whereas, yeah. like, nowadays, everything's <laughs> like a throwaway generation. It's yeah. like, if that was available digitally, yeah. one person would buy it, next thing you know, it, ripped. It share, yeah, it's ripped, yeah. and it's all over. And that's what happened with the music scene. Yeah, Because being a DJ, I saw that going on regular with music. You'd find one person would get a new track, send it to their mate, they'd send it to two other people, then it would go to five. And it would just, next thing you know, only one person's bought it. Yeah, that's and it, it. yeah, like 3,000 people out there have got it. Why is that? Why, where's that culture come from? It's just it's just the way modern technology is nowadays. Mm. But with this, like I say, the only way you're going to get this is by basically buying it from a store or getting it off your mate who's bought it from a store. Can you imagine the archive that, you know, the, the powers that be have on confiscated... Fucking flicks. I did think about this only the other day. That's a day. documentary in itself. Yeah, because the thing is in every... And the thing is, I mean, you wouldn't want to think, but a lot of them may have gone in the bin, but Probably. not all of them. 
There may have been someone behind the scenes who was working yeah. for BTP who took off a stash and yeah. who knows? Man. If anyone does know, please yeah. tell us. Holla. Cast is one of my all-time favourite graffiti writers of, its, of, of the 80s. And, and you know, to, to see pieces by cast in, from me personally is a, is, a, is a joy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and the amount of pieces... Of that time, like you say, that just you love that book because there's some in there. I fucking love, I fucking love. This book is bonkers because it's divided into sections. So because it's UK based, which is where in the title it says '80s UK graffiti," <clears throat> it's got the north in there, the south, it's got the east, the west, and it's got Mad. the Midlands. So I've got pieces in there from Scotland, like by uh, Mac One. I've got pieces and... in there, yeah, Newcastle. I've got um, Sika, which people may know him back then as Hope. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got Wales, so there's Dime in there. There's some system pieces. Wow. The only one area that I didn't get was Ireland, but mm. that won't happen for future reference. No, it won't happen. No. Okay. But I'll make all... sure all bases are covered. Uh, oh, I, well, as in like you will be do- documenting it further down. Yeah, so, yeah, the, I, I, I mean, what are we talking about? Yeah, I am planning on... Uh, a follow up to this. Come on, son. Come on, son. <laughs> the, secret, the secret's out now, so yeah. you know, exclusive wow. to yourself. Thank you. We like all that business in the podcast. Big that up. Um, and you've got enough content to, to flood that. Yeah. The cop, the the, the copying of mixtapes and stuff back in the day. I get it. It's, it's uh, you know, you only ever sell. Uh, an odd few because mm-hmm. everyone's ripping but there's there's got to be some moments where you're like thank god someone got a copy of that photo because it wouldn't have been yeah around. i bet you had loads of instances like that as well, there's a lot of pictures like i say i mean you get somewhere different angles you get somewhere the quality is not good because there's like a a, a flare on it yeah. but you get somewhere they come through and you get one guy who's not really shared his pictures on facebook and then you Jeez, mm. that's mm. rare. Because there's a lot of stuff on there. The anyone who goes onto like the Facebook groups, there's all your obvious ones that you've seen probably fifteen times yeah. in in one month. They'll just keep coming up and up. But there's a lot more out there, and that's the reason why on on the the next book I'm looking to do, I'm still going to keep it eighties because there's so much out there that's yeah. still unseen. Unseen. There's so many unsung mm. artists out there. The mm. each area as if anyone's got the book already, we'll see. The, mm. You know, it, it wasn't just like a, a London thing or a Birmingham thing or Manchester. It was like the whole of the UK, even small areas like small towns in the back end of, like, Wales. So Everyone sick. was a graffiti artist and some guys had some really pretty awesome styles as mm. well. Mm. So the, the emphasis on the next book is going to be 80s-based as well because, like I say, there's still so much more out there that, you know people will need to see Mm. and i think when it started to get from the 90s onwards things became more documented for sure so people have still got their pictures for example you've got a lot of uh, like graffitism you've still got a lot of those magazines Mm. out there because a lot of those things those publications were starting to come out then so there was a lot more documented that's still knocking about whereas like the 80s it's more like the lost years of graffiti, mm. even though it's like the foundation. Mm. And covering, and again, just covering the whole of the UK is, yeah. is a very, very special thing to to, to have achieved. I, I would imagine Wolverhampton was pretty easy for you to uh, gather information on, right? So, uh, <laughs> there's in Wolverhampton, there's a handful of like kind of graffiti writers, and a lot have kind of disappeared. And there's a few that like Rad and Pumpkin that have still got their photo collections and mm. have been able to get hold of like local stuff. I've been able to find some of my own old, original, old pictures as well, nice. which that's, every time when I come across one of those is amazing because they're like over 30 years old and I thought wow. I'd never see them again. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, I've managed to, so with my aim, with like the Facebook group, it has kind of worked because I have been able to get some of those pictures back. Yeah, in an ironic twist of why yeah. you even set it up for the first place. Yeah, um, there's a lot of contributors out there that uh, that would probably lean towards um, assisting you. There's some great um, 
arch- archivists out there as well with the likes of B-Boy Documents and Steam. Do you know Steam? Yeah, yeah. You know, these these characters, they, they, they hold so much. Yeah, Martin Jones is another one as yeah. well because uh, he was originally Goldie's manager and he, he, he was heavily involved in not just uh, Goldie but B-Boys and also the, the hip-hop kind of foundation <laughs> in, the, uh, in the early 80s. So I know that he's got quite an extensive... Uh, photo collection as well man i've got to tip the hat to people like yourselves and the aforementioned because it's you know without that archive this is nothing is there there's really nothing yep and the thing is like i say with this book as well it's not just for the older generation to look back and think oh, i used to have that picture and bring back the memories this is also as well i suppose a, a journey for like the younger graph artists coming into the scene as well for sure that will see like this is the foundations on like where it started because mm-hmm. some of the work in there like from 80, 1984 85 some of the real early stuff wow. you start you start to get a lot more when it's like 86 and then 87 88 89 obviously it's flooded because there's a lot more artists into mm-hmm. it and it, it's good to see with the book how styles have like just changed from one year to the next mm. and from one area of the country to another as well Mad. and you say you said to me at the start of the show well before we recorded um Thousand pretty much have been taken off the shelves. You've sold. Yeah, yeah. Um, so how many more you got left? Because it's a limited run, bro. Like... Well, the original run was eleven hundred. Uh, we did say that we was going to do fifteen hundred, but we've decided to keep it at eleven hundred. Mm. So there's probably. I know I've been to the Saatchi Gallery today. So there, they've only got about. Seven left. Jeez. Um, Get them while they're hot. The majority of them, they're selling directly through the publishers, Morton's Books. Um, They've also got an eBay site, uh, which it's available through there, or Amazon. And there's Mr Graffiti overseas as well. Uh, There's one or two others who are selling the book overseas. So, yeah, there's quite a few opportunities where people can still grab one because once they're gone, they're gone. You hear that? So once they're gone, they are gone. So you know where to get them. You know where it's at. You know what time it is. You know the insights. You've got all the intel. Uh, and all that's left for you to do is go and cop one, wherever it may be. Thank you so much for joining us, T. Oh, respect. It's been an absolute pleasure. Great getting to know it. you, man. Yeah, man. We out like it was out of fashion, Killer Keller podcast once again, doing it for you guys, not doing it for our health, We're doing it for the spread of street culture and awareness. This book could testify to that. Also cool. Um, and y'all, come again. Sharing is caring. Tell a friend to tell a friend. All right. Crumb don't pay, but neither do they. You stay lucky, people. Cheers, Taz. Peace. I enjoyed that.